Hi, welcome to Ask Less. One of the questions that comes up quite often is what is compressed air amplification? What is a compressed air flow amplifier? And this is, this is a topic that's quite often very confusing because I think quite often it's abused. Um, what compressed air flow amplification really is is actually energy conversion. Uh, the way an amplifier works, and I can show you here on the diagram, and I have one in my hand, is you have a compressor going into the unit, goes over a series of angles, specialty angles called coanda angles, which directs the compressed air flow into one direction. This creates a vacuum behind it, drawing still air from the atmosphere into the unit, thereby actually combining with the compressed air and amplifying the flow. What you're really doing is converting pressure that is normally lost as pressure drop and noise into flow. So it's really an energy converter. Quite often amplifiers are actually called air movers. Same thing with an air knife that I have in my hand. An air knife does the same thing. It entrains the air from the surrounding atmosphere, amplifying the airflow. Okay? And air nozzles work the same way. So uh, what the amplification really is, is the difference between the compressed air used and the flow from the regular compressed air by itself versus the flow after it mixes with the surrounding air and amplify it. So that's what the amplification is. Typically, an air amplifier can amplify flow anywhere from six to maybe 15, 16 times uh, for an effective amplification and I'll explain why. When you combine the air from the atmosphere with the moving compressed air, you're taking still air. That air has to be sped up, so you end up with a particular velocity coming out. If you bring in too much still air and you mix it with the moving air, the velocity is going to be too low. This makes sense by sheer physics. If you're taking something that's not moving and making it move, with something else that's already moving, it's going to mix together and you're going to end up slowing it down. So if you amplify it too much, you're going to get such a slow velocity that it's not going to do any work. So amplification and the term air amplification is really just sort of a, a tool to indicate how generally effective it is. Now that amplification is also an approximation it's going to be different depending on the conditions of the particular day. For example, if you have a very hot day and the surrounding air is less dense, your air amplification is actually going to be much higher than it would be on a day which is a lot colder. Secondly, um, if you uh, have a different pressure of the compressed air going in, it actually amplifies better when the compressed air is at a lower pressure. However, that doesn't really mean anything. You get a higher amplification, but what do you really need? What you should be looking at is not the figure for air amplification. You should be looking at the actual output flow, which can be measured from an air knife and from an amplifier and from a nozzle. You should be looking at the actual velocity, which can be measured by a velocity meter, and of course the force, which can be measured by a simple scale, by having the air blow onto it. So this is what's really important because that's what's going to determine how effective the unit really is. So uh, again, as I mentioned, the, the term compressed air amplification tends to be abused a bit. Uh, some people say their air nozzles, for example, amplify 30 times, some say 25 times. When in actual fact, the performance could be exactly the same. In fact, the, a nozzle that amplifies 25 times may, may actually be more effective uh, than a force that amplifies 30 times because you might be amplifying it too much, not getting enough force that you want to do a particular job. What's important is the flow uh, that's produced and also the air consumption, the velocity and the force produced. A real, more honest determination of efficiency and effectiveness is the force per CFM consumed. That's a much better determination of how well a product really works, not the term compressed air amplification. However, that kind of explains what it is, okay? 
Now, when you want to uh, make a nozzle, for example, uh, you want to basically have a proper force. You want to have an adequate velocity if you're using it for cooling. Uh, Cone-shaped nozzles, for example, give you less force per CFM, much higher uh, flow, uh, yet, and that's great for cooling, but uh, other types of design nozzles, like some of our air mag nozzles made at next flow, they have a higher force per CFM, and they're not cone-shaped, they're shaped a little bit differently. So again, what you want to look at are some of these other factors, flow, velocity, force, and the CFM consumption, as opposed to the actual uh, term uh, air amplification. Another little trick that people use to explain the differences between air amplification of one product to another is they say it depends on where you measure it. For example, the air amplification at the exit of an air knife or at the exit of an amplifier or a nozzle, that is a measurement of the entrained air at that point. So for an amplifier, for example, at the exit, that may be 15, which means you're getting 15 times what the input compressed air is for flow. But when you go about six inches downstream from the exit of an amplifier or from an air knife, you're going to entrain more. And that entrainment, on the average, is another three times. So three times, so uh, six inches downstream from the amplifier, the amplification ratio is no longer 15, it's 45. But again, even that 45 is an approximation. It's going to depend on the temperature of the air, the density of the air, uh, and even the pressure going into it. So again, the term, uh, when you hear a particular figure for an air application, take it with a grain of salt. It's an approximation to give you sort of an indication of, of, of uh, how much air uh, flow is created, but it doesn't really tell you what you need to know. What you need to know normally is really the flow produced, the air consumption, the velocity, and the force produced. If you have any other questions concerning the use of compressed air for blow-off, cooling, moving, drying, ask less.